Okay. Call the Planning Zoning Commission to uh, order. Cool. Here. Gallion. Here. Offsetter. Here. Trock. Here. Huebner. Here. Con. Here. Right. Here. Okay, we'll have a review and approve, approval of the May 5th uh, minutes. Is there any additions or corrections? I think there needs to be a correction as far as the motion regarding the, the vote um, when it came to the OSU extension. I believe um, TROC um, indicated a no vote on that for the record. Yes, I, I did correct that on my copy and I forgot to mention that. I apologize. But aside from that, I there's, there was nothing else that I saw that needed to change. I have a motion to approve. <clears throat> so moved. Second. Greater. Aye. Shaw. Aye. On. Aye. Dahlia. Aye. Offsetters. Aye. Cool. Aye. Huebner. Aye. Okay, under Board of Zoning Appeals, Change of Zoning District Request Gateway, <coughs> Gateway Fellowship has submitted a change of zoning district request from 430 Hebron Street. The request is to change the zoning from B1 Village Business District to Spatial Use District to allow for the use of property as secondary in post-secondary, adult, vocational, and higher education. All right, so you should have got in your packet a copy of the application, site plan, a couple letters of support from the Career Center, National County West Home Career Center, National University, as well as the a narrative of the rezoning request. Um, as Chairman Rule stated, we are there, the request was to change from B1 to SU to allow for educational use of the property. Sent out the surrounding property under notification letters. Had a few phone calls asking. Um, mainly just wanted clarification on what was being proposed. Explained what was in the plan. They were not opposed to that. One comment we did receive, though, was uh, concern for for the for anybody, students, adults, high school age, whatever, uh, that would be potentially using that building if proper lead and asbestos abatement has occurred or will occur prior to all all this, you know, being opened up. I, I told her I would bring that up tonight. We have Chris White here representing Gateway. If you guys have any specific questions, but. Turn it over to him, or if you have anything you want to add at this time, go for it. Just to that point, I uh, think we're being bored. Uh, Pastor Larry is out on vacation, so he asked if I would step in. I've been part of the team that's been recruiting outside interests that would provide the educational system into the building itself. As to the lead inspection, there has been multiple walkthroughs, and there would be needing to be some abatement. Uh, the physical infrastructure exterior would not change, the footprint would not change, the parking uh, uh, provided would not change, but the interior would have a very significant overhaul that would go through for that to happen. And we've had the developer go through, as you'll see in the notes, Lance Robbins. Uh, his most local project to us is 400 Rich. If you search that online, you can kind of see a little bit of what he's done, but you can also see on Smart. UrbanSmartGrowth.com, his national projects on the East Coast, West Coast, and in Ohio, to see a little bit of his uh, CV, as it were, on developing these kinds of properties. So he's very familiar with the concerns that would be raised for this and how to maximize the usage of the space and internal infrastructure that is already in place, such as sprinkler systems, HVAC systems, anything that is already in place. But it would it would be a major overhaul on the internal. If you've ever toured that building, you know that it, it needs it. But it has very solid bones. Would it be better to tear the building down or start over? 
there was discussion of that, there is a significant loss of internal infrastructure that is already in place, such as sprinkler systems, HVAC, and those things that you would be then duplicating in a rebuild of that space. It's about 70,000 square feet of space that is uh, well developed into habitable space. So plumbing, HVAC, all of those things for the old nursing home are tremendously valuable. So at this time and at this juncture, the opinion of the developer has been that it would be better to rehab and redevelop the interior than tear it down and then build it back up. Because if you haven't seen building prices recently, 70,000 square feet would not be cheap. So it wouldn't have to be 70. Are you going to utilize the whole whole building or is it part of it? Yes, we're going to use the plans are currently in place that we discussed with Ashland. Uh, university, the career center would be to maximize the usage of that space because there are classrooms such as advanced robotics, makerspace, 3D printing that very much could use the openness that is provided and the modular ability of the new building. If you look at the design, there are two sections to the original nursing home one that was a cinder block section and one that is a drywall section with four concrete walls and support pillars. It, it has an incredible modular ability to be broken out into larger spaces, and it already has the power supply necessary to run six six axis CNC machines, those kinds of things that would be good training. Do we have any any uh, drawings or anything of the improvements that are going to be made on this property? Not on the well, no, we don't. The village doesn't concern itself with interior. Renovations that all goes through the East Central Liability Authority. We don't have an interior. Is there a reason also. to go to uh, special use for that area? Why can't it exist for it is? It's not a permitted use of the B1 district, what they're proposing to do. So it has to go to a special use district. The thing of it is, once it has been used for that, and they decide in a year or six months that they don't want to use it, what's it going to go back to? It was the only the nice thing about the special use district. Let me back up. The B1 district is the village business district. So any commercial this any commercial use that's listed as a permitted use of the B1 district could go in there at any time. And we have no say in that. If if you guys recommend approval and council ultimately approves the rezoning, it would go, it would only be authorized to be used for this specific use. Any change from that would have to come back to you guys and back through the whole process again. And then it would be it would be classified as a yeah. hardship, and so we'd have to pass it again. No, that's up to you guys to decide. Okay. The special use district gives the village much more control than what it is now. If that makes any sense, the B one district allows it to be any permitted use that's in that district. And we, we could do nothing to, to control that. Special use by submitting this development plan, that's all it can be unless they come back to us or a future owner would come back to us. And to be clear as well, Gateway is transferring the property to the developer. The This is a condition of the transfer. Gateway would no longer be an owner or involved in the project. This would transfer to the development entity that would develop the property from this point. Yeah, that way we would have somebody from outside of the village having control of it. And uh, the, there would be no local control. And if that developer comes into problems, I mean, you're talking about school and you're talking about uh, I think the one thing was school for uh, food process and that type of thing. That building has been sitting empty forever. And there could be black mold in there, there could be all kinds of things in there. And if we approve it tonight to rezone it, we're locked out of it. There'd be no I, use. I disagree, we have more control. Okay. I've got counsel for a lot of people, not counsel for the village, but my understanding was we had to apply directly for the usages that it would be used for and not uh, with a carte blanche blank check use of the property. Correct. It's kind of hard to argue against education. Mm -hmm. my opinion. Being a B1 district right now, if someone came in and actually bought that property, 
they can tear it down and put a family dollar in there. Would that, would that qualify as a B1 business? Sure. Then we have no say over what went in there. I'm going to pull up the, the B1 district. Just to give you an example. You had any projections as far as what, what they're planning to put into the building? As far as money yeah. wise, yeah. Uh, early projections are someplace in the range of four to five million, but please do not use that as a gospel. You know, that is reutilizing the structure that is currently in place and maximizing that as much as possible. So we will be destroying walls to create classroom sizes because right now the size space is for nursing home facilities. And so we will be knocking out of the structure to put those classroom sizes in there. And maker space, 3D printer, CNC machines, those things take space. Make that stuff happen. Are, are the classes envisioned to run year round or would it just be during the school year or what? Right. At, at the current moment, uh, with the discussions with the JBS, is that they would be looking to move your uh, school year style classes to the community so students don't have to travel the 30 minutes all the way to Ashland. It would not eliminate Ashland, but it would be a joint effort in between the two of them. Ashland University is looking to enter in uh, to kind of build off of those curriculum for them what's next in the secondary sense until they build a class size that would justify a larger presence of them. Their interests were largely uh, focused on more of the nursing healthcare and and as well uh, business administration and apologize there was one other area i believe it was in manufacturing and hospitality one of those that national university was interested in building off of what the jbs already does but but the entire facility would all be educational it wouldn't there would be no component of uh dormitories or living there is there is the ability it is in the application for student residences for people to eventually be able to come in and stay there. It would be a shame not to use a facility that has residential infrastructure, bathrooms in every room, as that potential as well in creating that footprint. So it would not be the goal to destroy all of those residences, and but to create a student residence in and of itself as well. So that type of of infrastructure, they could almost potentially go to a year round yes. type classroom setting. Yeah, eventually. I, I hesitate to just tell you that. I, I understand. Part, that. But I, I understand yeah. that. I mean, to me, that's potential. Yeah. Well, well I think we would probably go have the potential to go year round, summer school, things like that. I, I don't know if the GBS already does offer it, but if that's part of their curriculum programming, that might extend this direction as well. But, uh, I will say the, the interest in the uh, hospitality food services, I don't know if anybody's been there, but there is a commercial size kitchen with hoods and everything already in place, which is why that would be a component of that is uh, work image. Um, so there would be year round use in the sense that they would be hopefully using the students to develop their business sense in catering, providing food service, those kinds of things. I would not be saying that the developer would be involved that, the school would be running that. And this stuff is all in good shape yet, huh? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> it means it, if you have, I would encourage the council, if anybody wants to go walk through, I have a key and I have permission from uh, Pastor Larry to take people through. It has solid bones with no foundational and crack issues. What it needs is an interior rebuild. And even if you did use some of the existing interior, it still has to meet all the codes Absolutely. for all those types of usages. So. Absolutely. And the JBS has obviously got the yeah. student requirements. We are aware of those. Um, and they know that they would be telling us exactly what they need to make that kind of stuff happen. Well, Ashland University would be doing the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Ashland University actually has mm -hmm. to meet certain requirements in the sense that they cannot have a facility that is less than another facility that they have. So we would have to build out according to any other satellite locations or anything else that they have as well. Or are they looking to have any exterior renovations? Or, do, or just paint? Windows, windows probably would need to be replaced, I would imagine, in that space. Um, 
but as far as paint and just restoration on the outside, the roof uh, likely would need some work done to it as well, which is a not a small uh, ticket item with that, with those flat roofs. But. Well, you're talking four to five million dollars. That's, 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 that's a sizable that's a investment, investment yeah. to yeah. do things. How yeah. long has the building been vacant? Uh, eight, you know? eight years, maybe nine years. It seems like it's longer now. Oh, yeah, that's well, longer than that. Because we're, I want to say they, the residents were counted in the 2010 census. No, between 2000 and 2010. You're right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So it was before 2010 census. So if if this committee approved and village council approved, do you have an anticipated start date as far as when you would hope to be up and running? I do not. I do not at this time. Um, it is without being able to. Make any commitments. We have several large local businesses who are looking to donate to make this happen as a nonprofit endeavor to develop the properties due, due to the fact that it will provide advanced education to their workforce that they've been looking for for manufacturing that we needed to accelerate due to the lack of workforce and just manual labor. So they're having to do more robotic and more advanced manufacturing even out east. So we have several larger Holmes County businesses that are looking to support this, but I do not have a time frame for you. This is just a condition of transfer to the developer to make that process happen. So yeah, I touched on it earlier, but just so everybody's on the same page, this board will make a recommendation to full council. Council will at their next meeting, which I believe is the 14th yes. of June, would set a public hearing date, would advertise it again 30 days, and then consider the first reading of the ordinance that night. So probably looking last meeting in July, realistically. So yeah, for the first reading. For the first reading and then three readings. Three readings. So you're looking at the end of August. Correct. Well, actually, probably the first meeting in September for passage. And then you would you would submit um, letters to the residences and try to offer feedback and they were all notified already. They were all notified yeah. for this meeting tonight. But would we would you do that again during the we re-advertise the public hearing in the paper? Okay. Yeah. But you do not send letters out. We so don't send, resend. You yeah. just advertise it. Okay. Right. Okay. Have any further questions for me or Chris? I guess what what I'm hearing it it sounds like a big positive to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you've tried to get a skilled tradesman of some kind, you know, whether it be an electrician, plumber, you know, something like that, they're in short supply, and and adding to that workforce. It only be a good thing in my mind. Um, so I, I think it's a nice project for the village. Like I said, it's anything education hard to be against that. Well, I'll speak selfishly as well. As you see, one of the potential courses was paralegal training. <laughs> I've, had, I've had to hire uh, 40 paralegals here in the past year, so it is hard to come by. And rural communities, good uh, training and individuals who understand what needs to happen. So, as a local business owner, I have maybe a selfish endeavor <laughs> to have some training in that area to be able to fulfill the future need that I have. I make a motion to approve. I will second. Con? Aye. Hofstetter? Aye. Peter? Aye. Rule? Aye. Got it. Aye. Shaw? No. Kreider? Aye. Before we move on, Mr. Shaw, I'd be curious in your reason. Okay, as so a without seeing any kind of a drawing, any kind of uh, commitment, other than we're going to change the zoning, 
and they're telling us they're going to spend four hundred thousand or four million dollars or whatever, without seeing any kind of drawing or indication of what's going to happen to this building. I'm against changing the zoning area. I can understand. How can they submit something to us when it's all the interior? We have no no say or control. On? I still think if you're ready to change the zoning area and the pattern of that area, there ought to be some kind of a, a written commitment or something showing us what's going to happen there. All we're doing now is six months from now, when they get in there and find a bunch of bad stuff and say, hey, we can't do this, we, we don't, we're going to change it, we're going to tear it down, but you've already rezoned it. But, so, but it's being rezoned strictly for educational use. So they decide, they go in there and they start working, correct me if I'm wrong, they, they go in there and start working, decide that building's got to come down. So what's a recourse? I mean, at that point, they build for special use or yeah, or, or, or they? Yeah, they, they'd still only be approved for this use, and then they'd be looking to get site plan approval from you guys for the new building. I'm still a no vote. Okay, that's I just was curious. I know. The reason I asked. That's fine. Can I ask what the next steps are so I can report back? Yeah, the next step uh, Monday night or uh, Monday night. The next council meeting, they'll set the public hearing. Okay. And first reading of the ordinance to council will consider the ordinance to actually change the zoning. Then, um. I, what was it? June 14th, I believe. Was the date. Is the next and that'll get yeah. set. There's a 30 day requirement for advertising, public hearing. So that'll push it to the last meeting in July, would be the first reading of that ordinance. Have the public hearing prior to the council meeting and then the first reading of the ordinance. That's and then the sense. second and third reading would be at the next two council meetings. Okay. So, Last meeting in August, likely. August, August 23rd would be the third reading. Okay. Would this uh, past letter be uh, at each of those meetings? Uh, it's encouraged, but not required. Okay. That will, that will that no, this, this specifically, the public hearing would probably be the most appropriate. Okay. There won't be any vote until the third reading, though. Okay. Very good. If that makes any sense. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I might uh, send you an email hey, just to, yeah. to get a quick scanning on that. Get it down. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Have a good evening. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Next, we have Stanwood Development submitted a change in zoning district request for 37 parcels from the R3 to spatial use district for proposed housing development. Trail Edge it stays west of Furlow Street to the that says from uh, Sill Street and Clay Street. Carrie. Carrie. Or Carrie, excuse me. That'd be a really large area. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So you should have all got a copy of the, the proposed site plan uh, layouts for phase one of this development. This, this initial phase is looking like 14 units. Correct, guys? Um, Bob Carey and Sill. So, um, multiple, the, the parcels I referenced in here in the narrative on the agenda are the existing parcels. If you look at the site plan, those don't, that number doesn't drive up, and that's because of re platting, re laying out the loss. Um, so, this, after talking with the developers, which we have Marion Miller and Monty King here and Jason Phillips. From Texas Engineering, Marion and Monty are from Stenwood Development. Um, I, I believe the consensus was to focus on this first phase. Yes. Tonight, and then as as those would go in, you guys would come back for the subsequent phases. Um, proposed development is showing private. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, private streets on in, within the development, utilizing still and carry obviously public streets to get to the private streets. No issues there. It's just a difference of whether they maintain them for the rest of the life or we they put them into our specs, dedicate them to us. They've opted not to do that. Utilities, however, water and sewer will be put into our standards, which they have to be anyways. 
and then dedicated back to us uh, via easements, which give us our legal access on private property. So not unusual we do that pretty often. A few places around town we do that currently. Um, Shout out the surrounding property under notification. You should have all got a copy of. We did receive one written response. Bob Shoemaker, you want to address those? However, you want to handle that is up to you guys as a board. Uh, received one or two phone calls on it. More just questions about are they going to rent these or sell them? What's the plan? They were interested in them. <laughs> they were wanting to know how soon this is going to happen. <laughs> there, you know, this has been a, a hot topic for months and months and months. That there's a lack of housing in Holmes County, but well, probably far greater area too. But um, so I, there's a lot of interest already. That's really all I have to add at this point, unless you have specific questions for me or the guys that are here tonight. I do have one. Why would we rezone R R three to S U instead of R four? Is all I want is that multi-family. R four is is multi-family. Okay. And again, similar to the last conversation, special use district. What they submit is all that they can do. If you go to R four, it opens up to mobile home parks, oh. apartments, um, duplex, triplex, single family. And there's no control over how they do that with the special use districts. Again, what they submit is all they can do without coming back to you. What's that area already zoned out there? It's R3. On the, on the uh, where they, uh, oh, that rental, or the rental place from there after. Right across the street. Robin's Terrace was rezoned to mm -hmm. the special use as well. That's special use? Yeah. Okay, how about the apartments or the rentals on above that? Summers, um, I would have to pull that up. That may have been done prior to, that yeah, would have been before 04, so I'm not sure what you know, let's see here. Are, are these are slab homes or basements? Or compliance that have slab homes? Slab homes? Yeah. How many units are there? How many units are there projected? Projected is close to a like, um, 50 units. 50 units. So 50 buildings. 50 dollars. So 100 units. Not yet, yet close to uh, For right now, the main phase, the first phase, we want to see if it's even. Is well, all that area in, in, the t in the village? It is. Yes. The, whole, the whole way of reach. Yeah. Uh, to answer your early, earlier question, summer, now the summers, the apartments mm -hmm. up there, they're doing our three. Make sure we're there prior to this last code update. Go for They've been there quite a while. Yeah. yeah. And the trailers are all. They've been, well, those are single use, single use lot, single unit, single lot. Yeah. Yeah. So phase one will be 14 buildings or 14 units? It's going to be 14 units, but two plus. So seven buildings. No, no, but 20. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, they're on uh, staff. Uh, similar also to the Danbury's down on the side. Okay. Should, yeah. I'm, I'm assuming colors and then things may change siding wise, but that's, that's the general layout of the building. Way of the building. Mm -hmm. what's, what's the uh, the house cost, or the condo cost per unit? Uh, to build, yeah. uh, well, what would you be selling that? Can you can you sell yeah, these, that? These would be rentals. We built right. These would be rentals. They're all rentals. Yes. yes. Okay. So I guess the question is to to go back and, and look at um, Bob's concerns. Can we address those? 
Yes, Mr. Hearns. Yeah. You just go one through six, Nate, or whoever. Um, he, he's, he's got some legitimate concerns there, I think, that need to be addressed. And, um, we can deal with them here. It might be, might be a good idea to get everything out of the open. Uh, the first one is more of a statement, not really a question. I sure don't really have much comment on that. It is zoned for single family, and that's why they're here before us. Uh, number two, if the zoning's changed to multi-use at 80 units, which I don't think that's an accurate number, how can two streets carry and still handle 160 cars a day traffic? Um, my response, from my perspective, those are public streets already. I, I don't, I'd be more concerned with the damage that will be done during construction than the physical toll that residential traffic is going to take on, on the streets themselves. Will there be more traffic? Absolutely. Anybody would admit to that. And will there be more congestion? More than likely. I don't know that everybody would be coming and going at the same time of day. And there are nice thing about this is you have multiple streets there in use as opposed to all funneling into one street. Yeah, but they're all narrow streets. They're not they're not full width streets compared to, to a new development. I think you'll find that the paved surface that is existing there is narrower than what what you'll find if in a new development requirements in a new development. Uh, it, yeah, maybe. I mean, you can pick and choose, I'm sure. Certain existing streets about 20 foot wide. New developments are? We've got one on the east end of town that's, what, 16 feet? The streets are 16 wide there. Average around town, I'd say we're probably closer to 22. What's the development on, on Danbury down there, the width between the, the apartments? Uh, uh, let me pull that. 25. 25. Mm -hmm. And that's what we propose. Yes. And, and these, these, these new streets are already being practiced today. Huh? They're not going to turn these streets over to us. We just don't want to end up with a with a brambling hedge out there where you can't back out of the driveway onto the street. That, that's another thing. You're going to end up right on top of each other. Just like uh, right the head, I understand that. Yeah. But, I mean, these are private streets. They're not, they're not turning over with us. And they're far wider than yeah. Brambley. Mm -hmm. Brambley is like 16 feet. That's what I was referring to earlier. These are 25. <laughs> Nate, was it your recommendation or their preference that they keep the streets as opposed to their choice? Okay. Is, I'm, I'm just curious the, the reasoning for that. Um, I think we took into consideration um, how we wanted to put the streets in. Um, and right now, under um, your uh, ordinance, the uh, for installation of a, a street, um, what we would recommend, which maybe we could also discuss too, is uh, a different approach to that. Instead of having um, curb and gutter and shove gutter out, like an inverted um, street where water uh, comes in the middle and thing catches, um, I was just had a, um, a development in. Uh, Ashland, and um, they, uh, that's, there, theirs is um, this, the same way, and the, the city approved to have that. So we said, well, instead of, let's say, not arguing, but have a difference of opinion on the way we wanted to construct that street, we can just kind of hold on to it ourselves and put it in, and it's, um, Good quality and good design, and um, would meet a standard if um, if you guys were open to that. 
Are you curbing these streets then or not? No. There would be an in inverted um, that, and that would be the same development we worked at today over national. And then part of the plans would be how to handle that that runoff. Correct. Then yeah, we'd be looking at the stormwater plan. I'd make a comment too about the volume of traffic. The plan is dead in all of these streets, so it's not like additional properties could come onto these later, increasing the volume beyond the development as is. And and if these are uh, condos, essentially, you would probably attract a lot of older people that that wouldn't necessarily be going to work in and out every day anyway. But, you know, the, the volume wouldn't be as high as if it was all young families and things like that. I asked you the wrong question earlier. I asked you how much you're going to sell the units for, how much you're going to rent them for. The goal is a thousand plus. Have you found that that's, I guess, the, 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 the range that people are willing to pay in? Communities like Millersburg, or how did you come up with that? Bigger? The uh, the way we're planning on building these is very energy efficient. Therefore, the utility costs will be lower, which will allow people to pay a little bit higher rent. And they'll be willing to do that. Um, but there's the the type of houses we're planning on putting in there are they're higher end, so therefore they're going to higher end. And this isn't really important to our discussion here tonight, but would would there would there be like an association where they'd be paying homeowners dues in addition to rent, or would it just be rent only for those units? At this point, the discussion that we've had was was rent only. Okay. Um, we tossed around the idea of having a homeowners association. Okay. In that same vein, would your plan to be? to handle all the maintenance for the folks that are here. So the you know the plowing of the streets, the upkeep of the landscaping, the mowing of the yards. Is that your intention that that would be part of the developer's responsibility or the individual units? At this point, the, uh, the street upkeep maintenance would, would be on us. Um, the landscaping, I can't really have to too many discussions on that. Um, I mean, this is more of a question for you. When there are private streets like this inside of the village, is there a requirement for upkeep? <laughs> no. There is um, there's a few. There's one we get called on every year that we have to explain is not a public street, so we don't maintain it. We have to talk to the landowner. So no, there is no, no requirement on that. But from yard height and all that. And yeah, still they still have the yard mowing requirement. requirement. Yeah, but as far as you know, they aren't plowing the street or there's huge potholes. That's that's between them and the property owner. This is another just question on my behalf of maybe not understanding. So if this is approved and these are put in this way and. Stenwood decides in three years that they want to sell these off individually. What happens to the required maintenance of those streets after that point? Typically, what would happen is the street would be deeded separately. It would be surveyed. All the streets would be surveyed off as a parcel, and somebody would have to maintain ownership of that. We wouldn't, since unless we, like Monty alluded to earlier, if the village council would decide to accept. The dedication of them, they could do that. But, um, no, like Medical Land, for instance, they want public street. They actually prepare a deed, and then it's a piece of property that is turned over to the village. It, it, the same thing would have to happen. It would have to be owned by somebody, some entity. And that, that's, if they're private streets, that's, don't take this wrong, that's your problem, not ours. <laughs> 
And if we didn't plow the snow, we probably wouldn't have rain or either. Right. <laughs> More than likely. Yeah. Exactly. Do you want me to go back here to the. Yeah, I just. I just uh, number three. How will first responders be able to properly handle emergencies, fire department, etc.? I think that's a more appropriate question for the police chief and fire chief. I'm assuming they have the capability of covering those areas. I don't know that. I can't speak for them. And and if it's a question of congestion and things like that, there are certainly much tighter more congested areas in the village that, that they're already servicing. Right. Uh, Mayor's Avenue would need to be curbed and sidewalks installed. I think if you look at the site plan, I, I, compared to the existing plan, it's hard to tell with aerial mapping. It can be skewed quite a bit, as Jason's well aware, I'm sure. Um, I don't Mayor's Avenue is a platted street that doesn't exist in the physical world, so I, I don't know how to address saying it needs to be curved if it, it could be part of somebody's backyard for all I, I can tell at this point. Where, where is it? Uh, it would be to the west of. Uh, is it behind the trailers or beyond the trailers? Beyond the trailers. It's, it's west of the, yeah, it'd be. So you know where Candle, yeah. Candle Burgess lives, it's west of them even. It runs north and south, west of those lots. Yeah. Below Doe's, I think, isn't it? I'm sorry? It's below Doe's house. Yeah, uh, west, west, and west of this place. It, is this the Candle you're talking about? Yeah. So is it is it in line with one of the right behind? behind? Yeah. Yeah. And most of it's all wooded right now, right? It is. Is, is there access to the trail? No, we're not only that, but that was the same. So the private road would be right over top of it, or the actual whole thing that they gave it to the other two were. Oh, okay. So when you try to look, so it's different. In my mind, okay. Yeah. That's done here. Yep. I'm trying to see where I'm at. So, Nate, you lost me. Mayor Avenue, is it existing or non-existing? It's it's a it was it's, it's a vacated it's a ladder street. It's not anything you can't go out and look at it. I mean, you couldn't. I couldn't take it out there and say this is where it is. It's never been laid out. It's never been graded anything. So, for all practical purposes, it never did exist. It was graded and it was never developed. Paper street. Yeah. Never okay. Was, yeah. Is, is that the one directly? Behind, uh, oh, okay. the, the, the yeah. house, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like okay. a 60 foot, I think maybe a 60 foot right away or shown as a six foot right away, but it's all been vacated. You guys own it, the majority of it. Uh, the next, next question or concern number five being a tree city USA, how many trees will be unnecessarily sacrificed for builder convenience? <laughs> I don't know how to address that one either. I, I think, in the grand scheme, more housing trumps the need so. for trees. <laughs> There's a place of a need for trees, but if there can be housing put in and trees strategically placed after the fact, that's the more appropriate way to handle it. Number six, if 80 units, once again, that's irrelevant, is each unit chain charged? for tap to sewer and water at $3,500 each. Yes, each unit will be charged for sewer and water if they're connecting to our system, just like any other development in the village. Thanks, Jay. So you, you guys talked about landscape, or you really haven't talked about the landscaping scheme, but um, obviously council um, that is it indicated some concern about the trees and everything. Is that something that you guys would plan to? I mean, I would assume that you would have plans to make plans for that. Yeah. Pretty much. 
much better at leaving Pretty the post, but not necessarily planning to leave the post. Oh, after this development, take trees there. What they take down? Uh, the question was asked about trail access. I know early on in one of our meetings initially, you talked about providing access for your right. residents and the neighbors to not vehicle traffic necessarily, but right. Right. pedestrian bicycle access to the trail would be a huge sell for those. Uh, I, I agree 100%. I think that'd be a wise move to leave. Uh, an area that's designated for accessing the trail. So I also talked to Jen Halverson today about the project. She didn't seem to have any issues with it. She just wanted to make sure that her and her board was invited in on some of the planning. Uh, any time to working with them there right away or anything that would impact her right away. This guys, nice. anything? Any, I mean, feel free to ask more questions or, or concerns. Or... It sounds impressive. It does. And I, you know, with all the discussion we've had over the past 12, 18 months with housing shortage and delivery in Holmes County, I think this is great that you gentlemen are willing to step up and do a project like this. We, I think it's great you're doing it in town. The bill is clay. I think the project's great, but I think I think the, the number is too high. I think we need to cut it down so there's a little bit more space and availability for the housing, uh, for drives, parking, uh, space between these properties. I hate to see them crowded at all on, the, on that area. If you'd even take them down a third of what you are expecting to do uh, would help. And, and sidewalks are almost a must because a lot of the people, even if you're going to be renting and releasing these to the elderly people, they're going to want to walk around there. And, and they're not going to want to walk out in the street. So I think the sidewalk and curbing could be included. And, and definitely have enough space we have one housing development that that happened here in this village, and the houses are so close you can't even park two cars in the driveway, and you can't back one out into the street. And uh, so I think that all needs to be taken into consideration before before anything else is happening. I I don't disagree with the need to not overcrowd things, but I would point out on the site plan they're showing. Uh, drive length of 25 to 30 feet, depending on which side of the road you're on, which is adequate for one vehicle before you get to the garage. Yeah. That's off street. And then between between the units, there would be 19 feet between them. So it's not, you know, we have, we have single family zoning districts that are six feet apart. Or six feet from 12 feet total. This is wider than that. So and 25 to 30 miles. feet of, of side uh, it's wider than that. It's much better than Brandon. Oh, and by far. What are we at? 15? These are all two car garages. I'm not sure. Brandon or another boat for something. Two car garages. You got, did you have plans for sidewalks in the development or were there not going to be it? It's just going to be part of the street. Probably be part of the street. Um, with the trail, as opposed to the thing, um, there's a lot of walking area. People want to go on the walk. Out of Bramley, the driveways look to be around 14 to 15 feet. Okay. How much is the street then going up through there? 16. Very tight. Yeah, very tight. So I think they, I, my personal opinion is they, they've laid these out in a way that they're, okay. there's adequate space. 
that's that's really the way to yeah. have the space. No, I, I agree. That's very important because of what happened out there. That's right. That was amazing. very tight. We've had issues getting our trucks in and out. Well, no, if there's, sure there's truck if there's two trucks there. parked in the driveways, a truck has a hard time getting through. Yeah. But, yeah. And that was really just as a result of trying to shoehorn in something, you know, dimension wise that really was borderline for being allowed in there at all, right? Correct. Okay. And I'm thinking, is there anything that, you know, there's fire? Why the sidewalk and the and the curb cannot be one unit instead of having a tree lawn in between. No, there's no requirement on that. And it I think be, you know that way you don't have to have a, a, a four foot sidewalk and a tree lawn and then a curb. If you can combine it all in one piece, uh, it it provides both both things. I mean, you know, you have an area for people to walk. Uh, I know our area up there is walk quite a bit. And uh, there almost has to be a cycle, even if it's even if it's for older people. Again, this is private. So yeah. I, 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 I Dave, I agree. I, I think sidewalk is great. Anytime you put one in, I think it's great. But being private, I mean I, if they were going to do the street and turn everything over to us, we would require that. So how can we force them to do it when they're not going to turn it over to us? They can't. All we can do is ask. I think this is a great idea, and I I'll make a motion to approve. It. And I, yeah, it's fine. I think you, you heard some of our concerns. And we hope you just take the heart and think about it. But uh, I will second your motion. Con. I heard you. Hi. Cool. Hi. Costetter. Hi. Galleon. Hi. Shaw. Hi. Thank you, John. Thank you, guys. I guess the same as Chris. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we'll, we'll get with you on. You guys are going to follow a very similar path to Gateway. Right. <laughs> okay. Different outcome. All right. Thank you, John. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You have a good idea. I was curious what that word was. Okay, the last thing we have is a preliminary review only. Mark the order of Salt Creek Properties has submitted a preliminary plan for consideration for a change of zoning at 505 Whistle Road, specifically the request with. B to change the zoning from R3 to spatial use to allow for a place for a multi family housing on the property as shown in the attached layer. All right. Mr. Yoder came in yesterday. Um, initially, his plan, as you got in your, in your packet, was a couple duplexes on the lower side. The yellow ones, and then potentially three single units on the upper side of a, what would become a new driveway. His investors, friend of his, has backed out, so he wanted to kind of amend this and just there's nothing official needed. He just wanted to get your input, um, not look at rezoning, keep it single family the way it is now. But just get your thoughts on creating these two lower lots that you see shown along here. That's right on the McCollum's. It'll be Bear's old. Yeah, yeah Bear's old yeah. place. Yeah. yeah. So the house would be one parcel, and then you have two more parcels to the north, as opposed to one as it is now. I see access is coming off the alley. It's still coming off the alley, correct. It wouldn't come off of his drive? Second one, but I would get to the I second. could, yeah, I could. Yeah, it had to come no, off the, the second one. The second one would have to come off. Yeah, yeah, the second yeah. one would have to come off his, yeah. his drive. Yeah, the corner yeah. one could. Yeah, the corner one could have access to the alley. Yeah. 
I would strongly, strongly, strongly deny any access to 83. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That's it. Is. Get a ramp off. Now we've got we alley to the south of this property. Yeah. Tough. Yeah. You already have a water problem here at that, that alley yeah. in the winter time and, and so on. Uh, but other than that, uh, two small houses would not be bad on that property. I agree. I don't and if it leave it residential, the lot splits would be adequate. So these two would be between where Ruby and Habitat, correct? In that area. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now his revision is just to put two units in there, just create the loss and sell them. Oh, okay. okay, okay. I don't. I don't have any concerns so, that really at that if that's all it is. I mean, it's, yeah, that's, it's that's all it is. It's here. I mean, they leave it residential. So the, the revision would not include a reason to correct. Right. right. I think that's all I have for you. Unless you have one more question if I may. On this, this piece of property, it's currently zoned what? Uh, R3, single family. The Worcester Road. Right, yeah. Mark yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I will let him know your thoughts, and then I assume we'll see the lots split here before too long. Thank I've been in this area. Does he have lots up behind here, too, then? Is there lots up on up the yeah. other side? Yeah. You know, it's all part of this one piece. Uh, how many lots are there now? I mean, that, that make up this property. Ruby and the Ruby's little place and the stuff. There. It's just the one, I believe. Oh, that's all one great big one. Yeah. Okay. Could you come down from that from the from the other alley, Nate, on that I'm up or two? I don't wonder. No, Trinity Church owns part way downhill. Oh, okay. Like from Wool Street. Yeah, it's, it's one one big piece. Yeah, okay. Wow, that is a yeah. lot. Three acres, wow. Mm -hmm. You should get turned right around that thing here. Mm -hmm. Time. That's all I have for you. You guys have anything else? Have a motion to adjourn. Second. Keep it here. Aye. Foster, aye. Everyone else? Aye. Aye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>